Thank you, hello and welcome to Games Master. If you're tuning in for the first time, where have you been? But my, how tall you're getting. You're four weeks late, but we've all taken turns keeping this slot warm for your arrival. So sit yourself down, have a mug of chamomile, get out your joystick and give it a loving caress, because that's what we'll be doing here for the next half hour. Right, to kick off tonight's little foray, let's call up the Galactic Scoutmaster himself, the Games Master. Greetings. I'm delighted that you've chosen to join me again here at the fertile fount of game playing challenges. We begin tonight with a truly anarchic escapade on a game called Road Rash. You'll be taking part in a frightful, unofficial motorbike race in which hot headed youths punch and kick their way to the checkered flag at speeds of over 150 miles per hour. The challenge is to come first on the Redwood Forest stage. I'm afraid to say that amidst this rowdy rebel, he will need to ride with Beelzebub at your wheels. And revving up the aisle with his hands on his throttle for this challenge, having burned rubber all the way from Dartford, Richard Wiltshire! <laughs> Now, Richard, you've never actually played this game before, but you're a bit of a biking boffin, aren't you? Yep, I've placed everything on the Amiga, and that's a good racing game, and I enjoyed that, I'm good at that, so I reckon I can handle this. Okay, now in this game, you've got a kick punch, generally get a bit dirty, can you handle that? Well, I think so. I said, sort of hang on, there was a cheat mode where, where you use a machine gun, but I've never used my bare fist before. Okay, if you'd like to sit yourself down in a hot seat, we'll get ready to play, Richard. And riding pillion with me in the pulpit, no stranger to leathers himself, is Sega Power's Neil West. Welcome, Neil. Thanks, Tony. Now, Neil, a bit different from your average bike game, this. <laughs> what general tactics can you give Richard? Um, OK, it's great fun beating up the opposition, um, but it does waste time, yeah? Um, it's quite a short race, so he's got to get to the front early. So if he can overtake, then do so. But if he does have to get rough, then try and grab the stick of one of the other riders. Right, we'll look forward to that. OK, then, Richard. Punch, kick, overtake your way through 14 other competitors to win the race. Are you ready? Yeah. Rev up your bike and start the race. Okay, and off goes Richard. We can see, oh, he's straight into the egg. Max, someone there, right from the start there. We obviously know what Richard's aiming to do in this race. No problem at all. Right, if you notice in the bottom right-hand corner, the number that was 15 is now up to 14. That's showing his place, yeah? He knows there's 14 other riders. Oh, now 13 other riders still ahead of him. He's whacking them about. He's, he's chasing Sid. He's fighting pretty rough. Is Sid going to be a problem to him? Um, Sid shouldn't be a problem. The guy to watch out for is a guy called Biff. And he's got a baseball bat. Right. And he'll do his best to swing at you with it. But the trick oh, is, my a little bit of air there. Not Sid just was it. You do not want to go into the back of a car, it's bad news. Okay, now it's coming on Dread here. That's right, Dread's Ominous right sounding right. character. It's oh, smacked him in the face, no and he's out of the race. He is. As you see, Dread went down to half energy. If you take right. another hit, it'd have fallen off. It's really quite good because the um, other riders actually have their own characteristics. Some are nice, some are nasty. Some will get in your way, some will try and block you, some will get out of the way for you. Okay, so we're just over a third of the way through the race. He's in ninth, eighth, oh, so oh, Right, he's now going to run to his bike, get on it quickly and rev away. Pulls a wheelie and off he goes. And of course he's lost a lot of time there. Costing time, more importantly, the riders who are behind him now have the chance to overtake again. So oh, no, look out. Oh, he's safely missed that one. Another thing he's got to watch out for. Oh! Another thing he's got to watch out for is policemen. Um, the last thing he needs right now is to be picked up by the fuzz. It's very painful. Okay, he's coming back on Sid again now. Is he going to smack him? Yes. Oh, oh, oh my took god, he's a He's now really got to concentrate. He's got to take a few chances, perhaps, and just do his best to get ahead. OK, so he's in the position. There's about a mile and a half to go. Not too much time to come first. Not too much time at all. There you go. Oh, Someone it. just took oh. the Gained him an extra place. He's in sick on the tail of Rex. And he's going on Rex. I think he's going to give Rex a hefty smack in the face here. And again. Oh, and down goes Rex. Into fourth place. In the fourth place, it's getting very, very tight. He's got about... He's got about a mile to go at the most. Rich is going at full Oh, there's two in front of him there, actually. He could be coming up in a second there's here. One. He's up there. It was a very, very close race. 1.6 seconds between you and the eventual leader, Viper. 
What went wrong for you? Well, obviously the crash. I had no time to practice my green cross code as I went through the intersection. I had to go flat out to win. Right. I was unlucky there was a car coming at the same time. Okay, well, unfortunately, we can't offer you our prize, but have you enjoyed coming to play games, oh, it's been Master? a great laugh. Well, we've okay. enjoyed seeing you streak through the forest, Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, our gallant loser, Richard Welcher. Yeah! Now, before we go on to our celebrity challenge, let's take a peek at this week's reviews. This week, it's fantasy role-playing games. First up, return to the time when dinosaurs ruled the Earth and Mars bars were only 10p in Shadow of the Beast. Lovely graphics, nice backgrounds, nice animation, but the gameplay sucks a bit, and after a while, you just get a bit jarred off. Looks good, plays fast, uh, but doesn't offer anything new in the final analysis. It's a bit of a disappointment. It's got a big name, but not the gameplay to back it up. <laughs> Next up on the Amiga, become a deity for a day and rub shoulders with gods from Zeus to Priapus in Populous 2. It's great to see how the, the races build and conquer and you really do sort of care for these little sprites as they're running around. It's one of those games, you think five minutes has passed and it's four hours. You've, you really just get absorbed into the game. Lots of brilliant graphics, brilliant gameplay, one of the best games around. Finally, on the PC, a medieval romp around ye olde Merry England in King's Quest V. It's not pushing back the boundaries, looks good, but it's a bit too cute for my liking. It's so American and apple pie that you just want to vomit every time you load it up. <laughs> There's no sex, no violence and absolutely no fun, I'm afraid. back. And now for this week's feature. The battle for the British console market is fiercer than ever, with Nintendo and Sega locked in a multi-million pound advertising war. Sega marketing supremo Philip Ray had a wee chat with us about Sega's battle plan. I think Nintendo probably take a more Unilever type approach to marketing, which means that they are probably more conservative. We like to do things which are a little bit off the wall and a little bit rebel rebel because we feel that the Sega brand needs to be seen to be street cred. If any one man is responsible for the street cred appeal of Sega's hardware, it has to be Jimmy, the swarthy game-playing star of Sega's campaign. Well, can't play Super Monaco all day long. Not unless you have one of these. Jimmy is a hero. He always gets the women. He's brilliant at playing Sega games. If he played pool in the pub, he'd win. Um, he's probably got a Harley Davidson bike, and he's probably a brilliant surfer in California. So with all those things, I think every man would um, love to have those qualities. Maybe, but Jimmy's creators were hopelessly wrong with their early ideas of how a game-playing hero should look. It was horrifying, because uh, we got it so horribly wrong. Our character was long-haired, rough, a bit dirty, and all the kids came back saying that they thought that sort of person was a bit of a granddad, really. And... Uh, they wanted someone much more clean cut and much younger. The revamped Jimmy now lives in his customised trailer from where he spearheads Sega's assault on Nintendo and the British market. It's a battle which looks set to run well into the 90s. Game over, sunshine. If you'd like more information about anything you see in the programme, you can call the Games Master Club. We'll give you the number at the end of the show. So, some sound advice on where to put your pennies. Now it's time for our celebrity challenge and we'll go over to Games Master to find out what it is. Welcome back. I hope you weren't put off by the rather violent nature of my first challenge, as I'm sorry to say my second offering is also not in terribly good taste. It's taken from a game called Heimdall, and is set in the drunken atmosphere of a Viking tavern. You have two minutes in which to throw an unlimited number of axes to sever the maiden's eight blades and save her from the bawdy Vikings. Uh, but beware, because you're somewhat um, sozzled. The cursor is extremely volatile, so you'll need to muster all your wits to release the axe at the correct moment. Good luck, young man. A fair maiden's honour is resting on your aim. Now, the competitor on this challenge requires a steady throwing arm and bags of confidence. Who better than the greatest darts player in the history of the game, five times world champion, Eric Bristol!
Now, Eric, you've come out with a good few nine dart finishes in your time, but you're playing with a different set of arrows tonight. How confident do you feel? That's a different game. I've had a practice at it, but I'm, I'm not brilliant at it. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's different, isn't it? Right. Now, we have to say it's quite difficult to control because being a Viking, you've had a night on the tiles and you're a bit full with alcohol. Will this affect your throwing? Well, I'm used to a night on the tiles, but I mean, <laughs> not too much alcohol. Especially when you throw at it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a bit more dangerous there. <laughs> that's, that's for sure, yeah. OK, if you want to see if the crafty Cockney can rescue the maiden, or will his arrows go all over the place, join us after the break. Welcome back to Games Master. Presently in our game playing hot seat is five times world darts playing champion Eric Bristol. And he'll be attempting to free the blonde maiden by launching axes and cutting the plaits of her hair. Joining me in the pulpit hockey is our very own resident expert, Dave Perry. Dave, welcome. Hi. Now, Dave, this is a very tough challenge. It is a tough challenge, yes. He's got, only got two minutes to do it in. Um, I've seen Eric practicing. He's, he's getting pretty good at it now. But it's all made harder by the fact that his crosshair is wobbling all over the place because the character he's playing is supposed to be fairly drunk at this moment in time. OK, well, let's hope Eric can steady his Viking hand then. Are you ready, Eric? Yes, I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, order, please. Game on. <laughs> So that's his two minutes off, Dave. Oh, he starts off whacking her in the head. Did well to duck out of that. She's back in. And that's the pass all over the place. Stuck the oh. face back on. So two wallops in the head, just to two show her who's boss. Which are the easiest plats to go for, Dave? The easiest plats are definitely the two on the side, the two straight out. Um, you know, there's two ways to do it. You take the easy ones out first, and then you spend your time on the, on the hard ones. Or take the hard ones first and just whisk around the rest. OK, well, he hasn't had the best of starts. He hasn't got a great start yet. Yeah, oh, and he's hit her head again. Three hits, 30 seconds gone, a quarter of the way through, nothing down yet. Still nothing down, he's, he's, he's just a bit tentative about which one's to go. Oh, there we go, first one's down. First one's gone. So that was one of about... Oh, and the yes. second one's down. Oh, that's, the hard, that's one of the hardest ones, that problem. So oh, and, the and Eric well is really now. flying well now. Eric's heading for a real eight-axe finish here. Yeah. He's doing very well, super smash very, and very great, well. as very Jim Ball well. would say. Oh, and he's... Oh. Now he's got these three, he's been stuck on these three before in practice. Oh. Just wallops on the head again. Now it's halfway through the time. One minute left. Three to go. Davies doing very well. Very well. I mean, normally you'd say steady hand, quick fire button would do it, but I mean, that shaky cursor doesn't make life easy for him. All right. And oh. it's hard on the bottom of the screen because that cursor does drop off the screen onto the table I very, very quickly. I see. Now, oh, oh he's yes. a hard one. Taking so a he's beard got off. Two left. Oh. And I see he's got um, two of his Viking friends. It looks like Jockey Wilson on the right, egging him on there. I think so, yeah. David <laughs> Bellamy on a night out or something there. <laughs> OK, two left. Oh, just missed that. He's got 25 seconds left. Come on, Eric. Oh, and there's just two more. He's got about 20 seconds left. Come on, Eric. We know you can do it. Oh, he's getting... Oh, yeah. You will have to be he's very doing, close, David. He's, he's doing, doing the right thing. He's doing like just keeping going. Oh, and he's got one left. One last and there's 11 oh. seconds left. 10 seconds left. Just he's missing it. Down. He's going to get it. Eric. Now, it was very, very close. You were your usual cool and flappable self. But the interesting thing is, the last plat there was about in the double 16 area, which is usually your favourite finish. That's right. I've been missing that as well lately. So that <laughs> doesn't matter. And the bottom ones were harder. Yeah. I don't know why, but. OK, hard. well, now, listen, Eric, as Jim Bowen would say, you're a lovely smashing bloke, but here's what you would have won our brilliant Games Master Golden Joystick. But unfortunately, that's the one of the darts and it has to go back. But Eric, have you enjoyed yourself? I've had a great time, yeah. it's been well, a bit of fun. We've really enjoyed watching you. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Bristol! <laughs> now, perhaps with a couple of tips and cheats, Eric could have completed one of his famous nine dart finishes. This is the part of the show where you can get your exclusive tips and cheats in the Games Master's Consultation Zone. Games Master. Welcome to my kingdom. I keep running out of lives on Disney's DuckTales. Is there any way I could get any more? Still languishing behind on DuckTales? Oh dear, oh dear, you are in need of help. Now please listen very carefully. 
If you visit the African mines, you'll be sent back to Transylvania, where you'll find two extra lives. You can then return to Duckburg through the mirror at the start of the level. Repeat this procedure as often as you like to build up a hearty reserve of lives. Thanks very much. Bye. I'm delighted to help. Are we ready for the next? Hello, Games Master. The eyeball monster at the end of level two in Altered Beast keeps on killing me. How can I destroy it? I must say, I'm rather surprised you haven't managed to dispose of this ocular ogre yet. All that's required is a little courage and nerve. Simply get as close to the monster as possible, then activate your force field. The eyeball monster will then be out of sight, out of mind. Thanks. Bye. Uh, who's next up, I wonder? Hello. Hello, and nice to see you. Now, what can I do for you? I've been trying for hours, but I cannot kill the wart in Mario 2. Could you help me? <laughs> Simple, dear boy. Catch the vegetables which come out of the pots and throw them at wart. Six vegetables in his mouth will defeat him. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Right, you. I think that's probably enough advice for one week, but if you have any queries, you know where to come. So, some juicy computer tip bits this week. Now, for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. Hello again. Not doing too well today, are we? Two failures out of two. Perhaps I've been overestimating your ability. For the last of this week's challenges, I've opted for a game by the name of Panzer Kickboxing. Uh, in this rather lax interpretation of the Queensbury rules, one seems to be allowed to kick as well as to punch. I should stress that I nonetheless require an exemplary display of gamesmanship. May the best man win. For this challenge, we have a bloody family battle, more vicious than the Ewings of Dallas. A brutal brother-sister punch-up. Please welcome Jason and Lisa Pozel. <laughs> Now, Jason, if I turn to you first, how much practice have you had at the game? Um, I haven't had that much, but I think I can beat her anyway. Okay, so you really fancy your chances against your sister? Um, yeah. Well, I you... normally beat her at home. All right. Well, Lisa, I used to fight with my sister, and she used to fight very dirty. Pulling hair, biting, lots of things like that. Are we going to see a dirty fight from you tonight? Well, it's not going to be that dirty, because I'm going to win anyway. <laughs> okay, well, we've got two very confident competitors here. If you'd like to take your seats and begin to fight. And joining me at the ringside pulpit is Tim Boone from Computer and Video Games Magazine. Tim, welcome. Hello, Dominic. Now, Tim, what kind of a fight are we going to see here tonight? I think I'd be very surprised if we don't see a very dirty fight. Panzer Kickboxing is all about, uh, basically, there are very few rules. You really go for it. You can punch your opponent, kick your opponent, and if it helps you at all, you can even try biting them. Right. I mean, there are very few rules here. OK, well, it looks like we're going to see an excellent fight here. Are our competitors ready? Then come out fighting. Now, in this fight, Jason is in the red trousers playing from left to right. Lisa's in the blue trousers. Lisa's down already. taking a tumble already. But she's up. She's safe. She's okay. Oh, and Lisa's down again now. Lisa Jason certainly knows how to use his kicking, basically. Uh, his, his, those, feet, those feet are flying. He's not using his fists very much, but those feet are quite devastating at the moment. And so Lisa's taking some punishment here. Oh, gets a lovely blow to Jason's midriff there. A nice big power kick from Lisa there. And in she goes again. Oh, no, but she takes another and she's down to one and a half lights. Jason is on three lights, so he's quite a bit ahead now. Yep. Oh, and Lisa's down again. What advice can you give to Lisa at this stage? Le then? The advice to Lisa is uh, use more kicks. She's trying to go in with her fist, but of course Jason's got the advantage. He's got the advantage of reach with his legs. Right, now Lisa's trying to take that advice out, getting in quite close, trying to get a, a short, sharp series of kicks there, finding it quite difficult. Jason's just picking her off with the odd punch now. Three, two, one, and that's the end of the first round. And we think Jason is slightly ahead on points. Certainly, Jason played the clever boxing there. So it's the final round, and they're on two lights each. So it's all even now, everything to play for. Lisa lodges them with a flying roundhouse kick, doesn't quite come off there. Oh, and she connects there, lovely. Oh, and another one in the midriff. Lisa's coming back like a demo here, Tim. Absolutely, Lisa's... Oh, oh no, just down. as I say that, she's down. Oh dear, Lisa's got to get turning round here. Oh, nicely on the other side of her opponent. And they're just ducking and weaving all around, dodging each other. Oh, 
Oh, Lisa connects. Oh, and Jess is down to one and a half lights here. This is getting very exciting now. Oh, and Jason strikes back with a flying round his kick, which leaves Lisa flying. It's very, very close here. Lisa's on two lights, Jason's on one and a half. There's 23 seconds left. We're looking for one knockout, knockout blow from one of the contestants now. One kick or one punch could sort this and, and decide it completely. So they're both in, going for the big kick here. There's only 15 seconds left. It's going to be ever so close. Jason's down to one. Oh, Jason's down to half a line. Oh, and Jason's down. This could be the end. Lisa just needs one big kick or one oh, big she's And he's down. I think Lisa's done it. He's being kind of down. I don't know if he's going to get up from this. Is he going to get up? He's just up from that. And there's seven seconds. Oh, he's he's oh, down again. I think he's out for the count here. And the referee is kind of Jason out. They're, they're looks... selling advertising on the soles of his shoes, basically. <laughs> and the crowd are cutting him out. And I think that Lisa has won. That was some fight. Jason, you were well ahead at the start, but then Lisa started fighting back furiously. What went wrong? Well, I think at the beginning I was using tactics more. I was going, I was staying back and then going in for the odd shot. And then at the end I started going in to try and knock her out. And right. that's when I think she caught me. That's right, you committed yourself and you paid dearly for it. Lisa, what a fight. Tim and I in the commentary box, we thought you were out of it. But then you just fought back. What happened? Well, at the beginning, I thought the joystick wasn't working or something because I kept just being knocked down. And then I just remembered that um, what I'd been doing, playing before, and then I just, and I just won. Okay, you did very well. So um, when you go home tonight, are you going to have a fight of your own and then see who wins that? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck for tonight then, Lisa. As our winner today, you have won one of the most coveted prizes in television. Tonight, Lisa is the proud winner of our Golden Games Master joystick. <laughs> Jason and Lisa Pozo. So with that bout of high-tech fisticuffs, time has run out on this week's Games Master. But never mind, the nettle tea's brewed up a treat. I'm off to quaff, and I'll see you next week at the same time. Good night. Now for that information about the Games Master Club. We have newsletters, free t-shirts and competitions with staggering prizes. The Monk hotline number to call is 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute after 6pm and 48 pence during the day. Lines are open around the clock.